Margaret, on a round-the-world trip, I mean, there are so many logistics. You all have different flying abilities, a lot to work out. Uh, there was a lot to work out, but it was an opportunity to go around the world, and uh, I wanted to do it. They wanted to do it, so we had to get along. How long were you gone? How long does it take to fly a, an airplane, and what type of airplane did you fly around the world? I flew a Cessna 340. The, it was a race around the world. There were people from all different countries. Some did not speak English. Uh, but it was, it, we spent 103 flying hours in the air. But it was a month. We would fly one day and have a day of rest and sightsee and then uh, fly another day or two. So it was a fantastic experience. And uh, when you have that many airplanes in a race, it takes a few days for them all to get to the finish line. Well, um, there was all different speeds. There were some jets, there were some intermediate, there were some slower ones. But the race, we would race, uh, for instance, we went from uh, Montreal to St. John's, Newfoundland, and everybody was there overnight and went out the next morning. The next day, we went all the way to Marrakesh, Morocco, which was about 14 hours of flying with a stop off at the Azores to pick up fuel. But, uh, and we were there a couple of days before we went on. So it was fly and sightsee, get your airplane ready, refueled, and go on. Now, on a race like that, uh, you're flying instrument flight rules? Uh, we spent most of our time uh, filing flight plans and doing it on instruments so that we were prepared if we ran into weather. When you're on uh, th that long a legs, it's almost impossible to do it all VFR. You've seen a lot of changes in, na in nav aids in your flying. Uh, what's it like when something new comes out? Oh, as I look back now, I started out by following fence rows and railroad tracks, and I think my first cross country was only about 30 mile, and I thought it was a long way. Then I moved into using the radio and I doing the Adcock ranges and the dits and das. Finally, the VORs came into being, <laughs> then into uh, to Loran, now it's GPS, and I thought when the VORs come in, nothing could exceed that. That was the best that could possibly be. I don't see how anything can be better than the GPS. And Margaret, uh, you were showing us some of your equipment. I, I see you even use a GPS in your car. Oh, I think it's, it's great. I, I do a lot of driving, too. And when I'm on the highway, I like following trucks. But when I'm following a truck, I can't read the signs up overhead. So I've got the GPS, and it tells me what exit's coming up and how to go and what my speed is and how far it is to where I'm going. I enjoy it. I see you're in the computer age here. Oh, I had to do it. There are many advantages, and when I heard people talking about them, I got curious. And so my husband got a, me a computer for Christmas, and I enjoy it. I'd like to talk about your family a little bit. Uh, I just think it's remarkable. You have a husband who is not a pilot but has been a part of this uh, your whole married life. Talk about that a little bit. Well, I've got a husband of 54 years, and uh, on sometimes in the winter time when the weather would get a little bad or something and I'd be home a little extra, maybe I wasn't as happy as when I was out flying, and he'd say, don't you have a student you can call and go? And uh, I'm not sure how he puts up with all the racing, but I do get up tight when I'm getting ready for a race, but uh, he's my best fan. He said, well, one in the family is enough. And uh, then you went ahead and raised two children, and your daughter's a pilot? I hey, taught my daughter to fly. I pretty much got her ready to solo in the day. I, I have always stood out in the field when I soloed someone, and I wanted someone in out in the field, but I also wanted to go up in the tower so that I could talk to her and hear what was going on. So I got one of the other instructors to go out and stand in the field and 
then she got her license on her 17th birthday. Just the girls and the family fly. She's getting ready to fly with me in June in the race from San Diego to uh, down by Cincinnati into Sporties. Yeah. Margaret, your, your book, Girls Can't Be Pilots, I read it. I couldn't put it down. How can, uh, how can the folks out there get this book? Uh, it can be gotten by uh, uh, email from me, or they can call me at home here. If they contact you directly, and uh, you'll autograph it for them. I'll be more than happy to autograph, put on whatever name they would like. Well, Margaret, we appreciate your time. You've been really gracious. A wonderful, incredible career. 80 years old, still racing airplanes. And Margaret, uh, what's next after all this? I just have to wait and see what the phone brings me.